All right, how are we doing, guys? Dr. Bailey with Evolved Health and Wellness. Uh, starting a little bit early today. I uh, just had some couple things I wanted to, to hit on. We'll give everybody a few minutes to uh, to get up and, and run in here. Um, wanted to do a brief touch on um, edibles um, and then going from there. Uh, I wanted to talk about the renewals. We're having a lot of renewals start to come through and some of the issues that we're starting to see uh, with patients as, as far as timing and then kind of what's going on with the OMMA. As always, uh, feel free to like and share the page or the uh, or the video. Drop a comment on there. Hey, Miss Newman, how are you? Uh, I'll be glad to get on there and respond to any comments that you guys have, any big questions that you guys have. Uh, it's been a it's been a hectic, busy, busy day at the clinic today. Um, it's uh, the process of renewals is going on in both. Hey, Miss Yan, uh, both Arkansas and Oklahoma right now. Um, and I'll probably just jump off into that real fast on the Oklahoma side of things for the renewals. Um, hey, Miss Tanya, is that, uh, you know, you, you have to book an appointment about 30 days out. Uh, now, a couple of things with that. I know like my clinic in, in particular, right now we're booked out till September 18th. Um, Mr. Steve did his, I'll come back to that, Steve. Um, so did a, uh, we're booked out till about September 18th. I, I leave some space at the beginning of the clinic and in the clinic to try to fit those patients in that are maybe going to expire in that time frame. So uh, look at your cards and especially if we're, you know, if you're an evolved patient, you look at that, try to schedule that appointment. If you can ahead of time, um, we can definitely uh, try to get you worked in ahead of time if I have to. Uh, it's, it's hard. I'm not going to lie. It, it is kind of hard. You know, for our process at the clinic here, what basically happens is we, uh, um, you book an appointment, we send you an email out, that email is going to have a Zoom video link in it. Um, you will uh, click on that link. If you're using a smartphone, we have you download the Zoom app ahead of time. Um, you get the link, click on it, be wary. It does sometimes go to junk or spam email. So you do have to monitor for that. After our appointment, we'll go over just the basics of what's going on with you. Um, I have a few questions I ask everybody. Then you get the new recommendation form emailed to you. From that process, it's logging into your old OMMA account. Now, some people have that, some people don't. Right now, most of the folks from two years ago to now, they all did their own application or the vast majority of them. We didn't really start patient drives and all that until oh, November, December is when the bigger ones started to really kick off in 2018. Um, so uh, there's still a lot of folks that know how to do that. Now, as we progress, if you went to a patient drive and somebody else did your application to the state, that's where it's going to be a little bit of an issue or a little bit of a headache um, because you really need to log into the OMMA account now and start looking to see that all your information is still accurate. You can get into that account. You can update things because that's what they're wanting to see. Uh, they're wanting you to update your address if you've moved. If you if your driver's license expired over the past two years and you had to renew it last year, they'll want you to update that. Um, you're technically not supposed to have to upload a new photo. Now, I will say that it does happen. Um, it, it seems to be real variable. It's not consistent from the state as far as what they're wanting uh, photo-wise or if they're wanting a photo. The, the regulations basically say uh, that if you've had a significant change. So like for me, if I grew my hair out long and it was dark, well, then that would be a significant change and I have to upload a photo. But it seems to be kind of variable depending on who at the state happens to open that email. Um, so, or open that application for processing. So make sure that you're prepared for that. Uh, the new recommendation forms, the exact same, but different. They, they just change the coloring on them, um, Change the coloring on them, change the layout. It's same information. Yours is at the top. The positions is at the bottom. Now, um, when you're getting your renewals, make sure your doc's going over. Hey, any new changes, positives, negatives, medications, those types of things. Um, because if they can't answer those basic things, I get it. There's some cheap docs out there, but man, they're not doing you any favors. They're not helping you out. Um, let's see here. Let me get to some of these comments, questions. Hey, Mr. Eddie, Steve did a chemical stress test. Uh, so basically what a chemical stress test is, uh, for anybody that's curious, is they inject you with a radionucleotide that, and that causes your heart rate to speed up a little bit. It's to mimic exercise, uh, and it's got radio tracers in it. So they basically take a big camera and then watch the heartbeat and it's, you know, as it's uh, exercising, I guess. 
and they look for areas of poor blood flow. That's how they determine, hey, he may need a heart catheterization. He's got poor blood uh, or poor blood supply to that area of the heart. If you're having chest pains or if you're just going through a normal screening process. Um, let's see here. What's up, Justin Edgerton? Yeah, we are. Um, some people care, some people don't. I'll be fighting in Oklahoma City October 24th for their 145 pound uh, featherweight title down there. Uh, the venue is supposed to be announced tomorrow, uh, September 1st. Uh, I'm, I'm suspecting it's going to be at Farmers Market. Don't know that yet. Um, I'm a big believer in that. A lot of a lot of folks, you know, when I sit and do recommendations, one of the big things I always talk about: diet, exercise, nutrition. Um, I'm never going to be one of those docs that tells you, "Hey, go lose weight, eat right, don't drink, don't smoke, and then go home and drink, smoke, and party like a rock star." So, um, you know, again, I keep my gallon of water by me at all times. So um, we do have that going on. That'll be kind of a cool thing. If uh, I am uh looking i've never done sponsors before but what i'm really wanting to do is i'm wanting to consider doing sponsors from any realm cannabis doesn't matter medical sports whatever uh and donating all of the money that those sponsors pay for for that fight and for that promotion and so what what we're going to do is i'm going to start putting shared posts out on on our evolve page with our sponsors all that money is going to be donated to a veterans organization now um, I'm still kind of up in the air on which one, because I'd really prefer to be a local veterans association. Um, uh, Wounded Warriors Project did a great job for me when I was in Germany. A lot of people aren't aware. I was I was in Afghanistan in 2018, lost the vision of my right eye, get medevaced out, spent some time in lawn stool at the, at the hospital there in Germany. Uh, they did great for me, took great care of me. So that's, that's something I, I kind of like the idea of. Uh, but uh, again, that's not final. That is something that we're kind of looking at. Um, let's see here, Brett Edwards. Yes, uh, again, if you need a renewal, get online. We're booked out to like September 18th right now. I do leave a couple, about 20 or 30 minutes at the beginning and end of each clinic day to fit people in that who's a, whose cards are going to expire. So make sure we check those out. Uh, let's see here. Miss Paula got her renewal. Good deal, good deal. Uh, Sherry Crockett. So it depends on the state. So all of Arkansas patients are $75 for recommendations. Um, now, Oklahoma, $75 for new, $40 for renewals. Two things with that. One, you will never have an access issue with me. If you message the Evolve page, I personally respond to every single one of those messages myself within about 10 minutes. So if you need a new form or say you need a letter for work or you have a question about dispensaries, whatever it may be, you're always going to get access to me. Uh, during your appointment, we're going to go over everything from your medications, medical history, and all that. That's really big for me to make sure that you're, you know what you're getting into uh, before you proceed. I'll also go over you step with you step by step how to do the applications in the various areas as well, depending on which state you're in. Hinton Heights is awesome. If you guys haven't checked out Hinton Heights, definitely do. Um, it's a phenomenal cannabis-friendly uh, uh, resort type area over by Grand Lake in Northeast Oklahoma. I highly recommend. Let's see. Good old Brett. Yes, sir. I'll holler at you. Uh, Jen Murray asked about being CLEAT certified and having an MMJ card. It's kind of like anything. Um, it depends on how often you have to drug screen for CLEAT, if it's a private CLEAT license or if you're working for the government. Um, I had several CLEAT uh, licensed individuals with their uh, or with a cannabis license. Uh, it depends on when you have to renew your CLEAT, what you're going to have to do for drug screening, all of that. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of a hit or miss thing. There's no universal answer with that, unfortunately. So, Ms. K, what you will do is you will get online uh, to book an appointment in about 30 days. Look on your expiration on your card. You'll go onto our website, evolvedhealthandwellness.com. There'll be a big red button. You'll click apply now or uh, uh, book your appointment now. You'll scroll down to the Ren Oklahoma renewal option, and then you'll go down there. All right. Okay, real quick, guys. Now, um, one of the big questions we get about a lot, and especially in my appointments, is types of cannabis. You know, how should I do? How should I try it? How should I take it? Um, and it's to me, the answer is always the exact same. When do you want it to work? And that's probably the biggest, the biggest statement. Now, the second biggest statement is what are you trying to treat? Um, and I don't get into that nearly as much in the appointments, mainly because 
with the appointments, I'm wanting to cover so much that it's 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 kind of time filled. So, um, if it's a neurologic or psychiatric issue, uh, as far as like migraines or anxiety, depression, anything that's going to respond that way, inhaled is going to be it's going to be best. And if the the reason it gets into some chemistry, but it basically results to THC uh, hitting the nerve cells a lot faster. Now, edibles, that's kind of what my talk was going to be about today. The big thing with edibles is it's all based on metabolism, your, your metabolism, the, the quality or how healthy is your liver, co-medications, and then dosage. Um, when we look at dosage, edibles for me are the easiest because you're going to start at five milligrams. It's hard to get two and a half. So, I mean, if you're really cannabis naive, haven't messed with cannabis ever in your life, don't know what you're doing. Two and a half milligrams may be a decent starting dose, but most people it's about five milligrams. Now, what affects that? Now, THC, um, it comes in as THCA. It's metabolized by the liver. That's how you get to actual THC. Now, when does uh, liver status come into play? Hep C, um, cirrhosis, uh, there's some, uh, bilir uh, some uh, biliary system disorders that cause some problems with the liver. If your liver is damaged, what's going to happen is it's not going to metabolize it as effectively um, in the second round. And what do I mean by that? So as you, you eat it, it goes through the digestive system, filters through the liver, you get the first uh, metabolism, and it's basically, a, I believe it's a decarboxylation. Um, what's going to happen then, you end up with a secondary metabolism back to the liver for excretion. And anyone with liver injury or with something that uh, prolongs uh, cytochrome P450 or inhibits cytochrome P450, P450 is going to have an increased amount or response to cannabis, to edibles, anything to the digestive tract. Um, and so that whenever I hear someone say, hey, we, uh, you know, I, just, I, I want a recommendation and I just I need a form sign. So there's, there's a lot to this that's kind of getting skipped over by a lot of our docs. And so really, really, really push and emphasize with this doc, whoever's doing your recommendation, doesn't matter who. Whoever's doing it, make sure that they're going over, hey, how is this going to affect this medication, that medication, or the other? Now, most of the time, there's not really any serious interactions, but it will change your dosing to a degree. Um, I, I, I'm a big fan of telling folks the worst thing that's typically going to happen with cannabis is you're going to eat dinner and go to bed. Uh, it, uh, um, it's definitely a, uh, a more complex issue. Uh, but to me, it's trying to compare tomatoes to apples whenever you're looking at, you know, complexities with medication versus cannabis. Now, the thing with uh, that, I actually had a couple of patients today that were coming in, they're actually renewal patients that really struggled to get a lot of benefit, uh, which was kind of surprising, uh, but they really struggled to get some benefit with cannabis over the past two years. They were Oklahoma patients. And part of it was bud centers and dispensaries not being educated on the product and not being able to understand or explain testing and all that. That's twofold. And that's a that's something for another day that I may even hit on next week is testing because testing in Oklahoma right now is very inconsistent. Um, it's all over the board. But the reason that is so important because it allows you to determine what you respond best to. Everyone has CB1, CB2 receptors. We know where, you know, the lymphatic system, nervous system, but I'm, I almost guarantee you that there's a couple of things that come into play that we will find out in the near future with research. And that's gonna be distribution of those receptors. I strongly feel like there's gonna be a lot of different research that shows that some people have densely populated CB2 receptors and not so densely populated CB1 and vice versa. Why? In that, when you come, when it comes down to it, I think we've all come across that person or that individual that has eaten an edible and they'll eat a thousand milligrams, not feel a thing. I know I've had about eight to ten of them in the past two years. Um, does it happen routinely? No. Does it happen to everybody? Very, very, very rarely, but it does happen. Now, the things that could cause that uh, poor product and, and without testing and accurate testing, it's really hard to determine. Liver function, again, how well is your liver metabolizing? Um, med Co-medications, are we using anything that's going to um, um, increase uh, cytochrome P450 that's really going to help in the metabolism and breakdown of all those things? 
Um, and then well, did they eat it on an empty stomach or not? And that's something I kind of skipped over earlier. Uh, you will get a much faster absorption of edibles on an empty stomach than on or just then uh, after a meal. Now, after a meal, you will get a prolonged edible exposure um, as far as from symptom or symptom relief lasting a little bit longer after, with food. Uh, most of the time, everything that I've seen really, really recommends uh, after a meal just for a controlled setting. Let's see here. Heidi Murray, my 15 year old daughter, we want to get a card. We have to get two rice. Yes, Miss Heidi, if you uh, just go to the Evolve page and uh, website, and then you'll click on the red book your appointment button. From there, it will, um, I, all of our options will pop up. You'll click the pediatric option. Our, our pediatric recommendations are $25. Right now, uh, you've got uh, Tulsa Higher Care doing another, the other option with us. Uh, Dr. Foreman up in Bartlesville is doing them as well. There's quite a few clinics uh, around the state that'll do them. I do them virtually uh, and, and then try to get you set up with some way to help with application assistance. Uh, Mr. Steve. Uh, Venom and drink, and I'm feeling it, but I'm really going to cause muscle spasms in my arms. Well, I think it would depend on, again, we have to look at testing. We have to look at what's in this product. Ms. Paula Burr says, someone told me if your liver doesn't produce a certain enzyme, you won't feel edibles because your liver will pr process it too slow. Any truth to that? Yes and no. Um, I, that there is, there is a, part of that but there's two main mechanisms two main uh, uh cytochrome two main part of the cytochrome uh, p450 system actually have them pulled up let me see here uh so it's uh 3a4 and 2c19 uh uh that help break down and metabolize uh thc so if you're missing one of those is are you going to get full metabolism you're going to get full effect probably not and I think that that's probably where they're getting at without realizing that they're getting at it. There are some uh, medications that inhibit those enzymes. Uh, there's also some medications that speed those enzymes up. Um, there's a lot of different things that kind of go along with that. So I think that uh, uh, that's going to be a huge point for research and something that uh, my hope is to try to get into, but it's it's difficult with uh, getting the, the documentation from the government and all that. I think that there's some really neat inf uh, information to be found out about that, though. Samantha Bowen, everything I or Bowen, everything I've tried lately makes me crazy paranoid. Any advice for that? Yes, um, I would almost infinitely uh, guarantee you that what you, that paranoia that you're feeling is something sativa based. Um, it's it's almost guaranteed, not guaranteed, but almost guaranteed. I think the big thing is to look at testing, you know, and too many times you see the posts on Facebook, you know, we, we got that fire, we got that, you know, we got that flower, that, that, that top shelf and stuff, but really all it is is a super strong sativa or sativa hybrid. Um, you have to look at what compounds are in there. We know that typical, not typical, but sativas, especially sativa dominance, uh, they, they can and will cause panic, paranoia, hallucinations. I mean, that's probably the bad aspect of cannabis, if there is one, honestly, is, is the possibility of running into that. And I always tell folks that if you have underlying anxiety or paranoia or panic attacks, I probably would avoid those or anything with a lot of Delta 9 in it and then kind of address accordingly to how you respond after that. But I, an indica hybrid in the evening is going to be your best bet to, to help control some anxiety components without triggering that panic and that paranoia. Let's see here. Now, um, part of the reason that you don't get that same mental aspect from edibles as inhaled is again, going back to the CB1, CB2 receptors uh, and the metabolism that by the time THC reaches its peak through an edible route or the GI system, it's at a much lower peak than it would be if it was inhaled. And then on top of that, it's prolonged. So that's why you tend to get an edible that lasts four hours or six hours or eight hours. Now, Ms. Paula said CBD can counteract paranoia and anxiety. Yes, it absolutely can. 
um, myrcene or mango can uh, strengthen um, or make cannabis more potent, I guess is probably a better way to do it. Uh, CBD, uh, adding CBD flour or CBD oils, tinctures, whatever it may be, will help bring that back down. Um, but uh, let me see, what else was I going to do here on? Again, if you get those, this is actually one of my favorite ones so far. There's been a lot of interaction and stuff. But again, guys, share that video out. Um, if you guys have big questions, by all means, feel free to hit me up. Uh, I'll do everything I can to help. If I don't know the answer, I'll let you know. Hey, I don't know, but I'll look into it for you and try to get a hold of you. Another big thing, uh, I really want these. And like I said, this has been a great one. I'm super impressed. I really appreciate you guys interacting with me because it lets me know that, hey, we're not wasting our time, not wasting y'all's time, making sure it's something you want to see. Um, if there's topics that you come across, you're like, man, I would really like to know about this. Shoot me a message to the Evolve page. Um, or post on the Evolve page. We've got events set up with each one of those things. Again, we've got some really cool stuff that we're getting ready to come out with. The hope is to increase education, uh, increase accessibility, um, and, and make improvements in the industry. Um, my goal is to try to partner with everyone in the industry that's doing the right thing. At the end of the day, if we do those, the industry is going to continue to grow on its own. It's going to continue to help folks. Because I can tell you the cool thing right now is even with 350,000 cannabis licenses in the state of Oklahoma, 75% of my cannabis patients uh, daily in Oklahoma right now are cannabis. And I have never heard about cannabis, but their next door neighbor has been on pain medications for a decade and is now not on it or uh, anxiety meds and has been able to kick those or whatever it may be. They made these big improvements and now they're like, huh, maybe I can do that. So maybe that's your neighbor. Maybe that's your family member. Um, it's something that I feel like if I sit and talk with folks and just give them a little bit of data, just a little bit of the stuff we've been able to accomplish and do, they're usually going to be pretty excited about it. Uh, Joe Collins, stand for, so renewals in Oklahoma, um, are 40. Arkansas are 75. And it's, there's some reasonings behind that, but it, a lot of it has to do with the medical board and what they require in Arkansas versus Oklahoma. All right. We're also going to have an Evolve app coming up pretty quick. And then from there, um, we're going to do, uh, I'm going to do something for Veterans Day. If you remember back two years ago, uh, we did the very first free patient drive in the state of Oklahoma, and it was all veterans. So watch for our page. I'm going to come up with a way to do that. I'm just trying to figure out how I can do it through our website and through our booking software. Um, it's something that uh, uh, um, I really, really feel strongly about. We've been able to work with the VA here uh, in Tulsa. Several of the PTSD counselors have been great about sending their patients over. We've been able to decrease clinical presentations for suicidal ideation uh, and exacerbations of PTSD. Uh, we've been able to decrease pill counts in Oklahoma by an astronomical, almost asinine amount. Uh, so it's something that, again, I want to try to figure out a way to do something. I just haven't quite figured that down out yet. Now, I will be here uh, through October. Uh, October 24th is a fight. Uh, I leave town October 25th. I will be back the next Sunday. I'm, I'm basically gone three weeks out of the entire year. So 49 weeks I'm here. I'm gone for one week for the military, one week around Christmas, either before or after Christmas. And then I am um, gone one other week for vacation. Uh, the rest of the time I'm here, Monday through Friday, and then every Saturday just about some sort of patient drive or something along those lines. Uh, Miss Abigail in Arkansas. Yes, ma'am. So we do virtual appointments for Arkansas. Right now, we're like, September 18th, I think, is getting booked up as we speak. Um, I will periodically go through and open up some appointments. Uh, and if you need seen before then, what we can do is uh, have you book an appointment, shoot me an email to the Evolved Health and Wellness at gmail.com. When you email us or message the Facebook page and say, hey, my card's going to expire. Is there any way you can give me a sooner? I usually try to work around our schedule and fit you in at a different time so that you are covered and your card doesn't expire because at the end of the day, yeah, you don't want that. Oh, real quick, Oklahoma. One thing I forgot to mention, and I saw it posted on a couple of our pages. Some people did some good job with this. When you submit your renewal application, one thing's going to happen is you're going to get an email within about 48 to 72 hours, and it's going to be like, hey, uh, you've been approved. Cool. 
once your card goes into circulation or the printing process, your old license then becomes invalid. Uh, and apparently this is real hit or miss, but it's about 80% of the folks I've talked to, it does shut your old card off for about seven to 10 days while you're waiting for your new card to come in. So plan ahead with that part as well whenever you go to purchase. Um, and then, um, what else was I was gonna tell us something else? Ah, when you book an appointment, um, and this is universal, no matter what clinic you're going to, no matter where you're going to in Oklahoma, when you book an appointment, fill in your information exactly as it is on your Oklahoma ID. Do not use PO boxes, don't use your abbreviated name, don't use the name you go by, put the exact name, because what we're seeing is a lot of folks are putting information that's not on their ID, on their, and when we type up your recommendation form, how you enter it on your, on your chart is how we're gonna type it. And so it's gonna have to get retyped. And right now I've done the first retype for free for almost everybody. Uh, but I'm going to have to bring that to an end before long because it's it's going to be about 30 a day. Um, now, if it's an error on my fault, right, and sometimes that happens, I'm not going to lie. I'll, I'll own that all day long. I'll just retype it and send you a new one. Uh, but we got to make sure that we're, that we're putting in that information accurately. Arkansas accepts P.O. boxes. Oklahoma does not accept P.O. boxes. So try to make sure you leave that out or make sure you put your uh, your physical address on there. All right, any, let's see here, make sure I got everybody to talk to. Awesome, guys. Again, share this page out. Um, we just hit like two, 10,200 followers on the Evolve page. Uh, share the videos. If you got somebody that's really curious about cannabis or about just learning about just general medical stuff, um, I am probably, I don't know how well it'll be received. We'll see. I'm uh, going to do something on the, the diet and whatnot that I do. Uh, so definitely uh, watch out for that as well. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you later.